This year, my second son graduated from high school and requested to go hiking in Colorado for his grad trip. I was only too happy to oblige, so we packed up and took off for a long weekend in the Rampart Range. None of us had hiked in Colorado before, and we were all fascinated by the totally different scenery and topography. This caused some surprise among the few locals we encountered who wondered why we were staring at rocks. Make a sick photo of We started in the town of Palmer Lake and created a loop by joining several trails from all trails into a custom trail. We hiked one side of the Chautauqua Loop, then along the back side of Mount Hermon and Mount Raspberry. After a very short road section, we climbed up Mount Hermon and walked along the ridge line. We camped about here the first night. The second day, we continued hiking the ridge line of Mount Raspberry, then down to the foot of Mount Chautauqua up and over, and completed the loop back to the car park. This is the top of Mount Harmon. Can't quite see beautiful mountains there in the distance. And then down below here, we've got Monument and Colorado Springs over there. And then to the left, on the lake. This is just about 9,000 feet, 8,964 or something like that. And of course, freezing rain now we're up here. There's a scavenger box up here. So we've got some hand sanitizer. We've got a trail journal, which I signed. A couple trail journals actually, some of them are full. We've got some caution tape. We've got a first aid kit, got some lighters, tissue on the go, whole lot of pens, bunch of hair ties, business cards, nothing super awesome but kind of cool to find something up here after 
with the hard work of climbing up. to a level where we can find some flat ground to pitch our tents for the night. Trying something new for me this trip. Half a packet of couscous, a packet of ramen, the ramen seasoning, bacon bits, hot pepper flakes, and mix it all together with hot water. This happens to be pork ramen, which goes well with the bacon bits. Let's go try it out and see how it goes. Everything tastes good when you're hungry, but that is super good. I'm gonna do that again. Well, good morning, everyone. I gotta say, once again, I'm impressed with my Justin X Mid Pro 1. I'm just continuing to take it out and use it in different test scenarios in the field. Last night, it rained heavily all night long. Temperature outside the tent got down to about 40 degrees. And once again, just zero condensation, um, no backsplash anywhere, just uh, bone dry inside and just rock solid. Great night of sleep. And the more I use it, just the more confident I am that it's going to handle whatever nature throws at it. And I'm really impressed and enjoying it. So onwards and upwards, about to have some breakfast and get hiking for the day. Didn't manage to film that much yesterday because honestly the altitude kicked my tail. We live at about 1,200 feet and came up to about 7,000 to start hiking and hiked up to about 9,000 very slowly, maybe about one and a half miles an hour, which is like half the usual hiking pace. Uh, camped last night at about 8,600 feet and just dead, like headache and some funny chills and just huddled up in my quilt for a while and managed to get a fire lit and get some dinner in me painkillers, had a really good night of sleep and woke up this morning feeling great and not having any real trouble hiking today. So I think it was just getting used to the altitude a little bit even though it wasn't super super high. Uh, it was still a challenge and doing much better today and hoping to be able to film more. Hey guys, push it off. You want to push the rock Evan? Yeah. The trail is just covered in quartz here. Never seen anything like this before. Don't have a good way to show the incline here, but Coming down here yesterday, we were saying, don't need to hike back up this, do we? And guess what we have to do? I don't want to do it. 300 feet elevation in 0.3 miles. So it's raining, but every so often we just get a glimpse through the trees of what the mountain looks like on the other side, cloaked in clouds and all mystical looking and just taking it all in and enjoying it despite walking in the rain.
when we're headed out for the second time from Armour Lake Trailhead. We finished the loop this morning, really wet, rained all morning. So we got to the car, we had some dry clothes there and took advantage of that and also a quick jaunt to Taco Bell. Had the nasty surprise also of parking ticket. We had paid and displayed as we were told to, but we could only pay and display one day and we were there overnight. So the machine just wouldn't issue tickets for two days. So we're gonna have to fight that uh, and we're parked in the same place again tonight. So we've uh, paid for two separate one day passes and hopefully having two of them sitting on the dashboard will prevent them from giving us another ticket. We'll see. But we're headed out to Harrison plane crash site, which is about a 10 mile round trip, somewhere where a pilot crashed the plane and it's still there. And we'll show you when we find it. So I'm no naturalist, but I'm told that all this mess here is caused by a squirrel who has probably lived here for decades. I've been climbing up and down this tree. couple of plaques here commemorating the life of Sidney Harrison who served in World War II, D-Day invasion and in the Korean War and crashed a plane here while he was taking it from Wichita to uh, the Air Force Base in Denver. Uh, so I'll show you the plane wreckage now that we hiked out to. I want to take a minute to talk about a piece of gear I've grown to love. This is not a sponsored segment and I was provided no gear to evaluate. I have a spreadsheet where I keep track of the weight of each piece of my gear, what I take on each hike and my subsequent notes to self. That spreadsheet has a column where I can mark whether a particular piece of gear is essential or a luxury item. Until now I've had my Flextail pump marked as a luxury item. A simple rule of thumb for weight reduction is that each piece of gear you take should fulfill more than one function. It's already known that using a pump extends the lifespan of inflatable pads because your breath contains moisture that encourages mildew to flourish inside the pad. Even ignoring that benefit, at altitude I would have struggled to muster enough breath to get my pad inflated. Sure, I would have grown accustomed to the altitude, but beyond that single function for inflating my pad, my pump secondly helped get stubborn fires with damp wood going without having to blow. Having a fire is so good for morale and camaraderie as well as for boiling water without using fuel. Thirdly, because it rained a lot and I had to have my phone out for navigation, the charging port ended up getting wet so I couldn't charge it. In those cases I used my pump to dry out the charging port when it simply wouldn't have dried out by itself and we would have been stuck with no navigation. Because of those three uses, I'm changing my pump from luxury to essential gear going forwards. this morning we've just got to head back to the car so it doesn't really matter if we're wet uh, had a pretty good afternoon yesterday it didn't rain at all on the way out to the plane crash site so got some 
nice footage and beautiful hiking weather. About to close this hike down. Had a great time out here. Thank you, Colorado. Definitely will be back. And I'll show you guys what we find as we go. the monument after which the town of Monument is named. The mountain behind it is Mount Hermon. We were up there Friday night, hiked up it from the backside and then along the ridge line, Mount Raspberry, down the back of it to Mount Chautauqua into the town of Palmer Lake.